Hey there, Steve Rubis with another installment of Capital Markets Investor Relations in two minutes or less. Today, I want to walk through the Odd Talum Global Education short attack that came out on January 30th, uh, 2024. I think there's two things here that are very instructive. One, I think the short attack is very low quality. And what I'd like to do is, is illustrate for management what a high quality short attack actually looks like. So let's start with the Odd Talum situation. I think the short thesis is very low quality, and I think it's because it's violated a very fundamental rule of shorting for me, and that's that a good short never manipulates the outcome to their liking. Some of the comments that Sofcat Capital made in the, the halftime report uh, interview on CNBC are tantamount to them trying to control the outcome of the situation and manipulate the business. And then secondly, the, the thesis is very low quality because the thesis is already well known. And a lot of the information that underpins the short thesis can be explained away by business judgment. So what does a good short attack actually look like? It's very simple. It's based on a simple factual statement that, that illustrates a fundamental, simple structural flaw of the underlying business. An example would be if my company, Reficio, is a biotech and I ran my clinical trials in Russia. Biotech investors know that if you run your clinical trials outside the U.S., there is a 99% probability of being rejected by the FDA. And so that is a simple factual structural statement that you know that you can then build a case against the company on. So in real life, let's look at a company called Cano Health that was a SPAC. There were two fundamental flaws with that business that were factual and simple that made you say this is prime for a short attack. The first were accounting issues. Their adjusted EBITDA addbacks were not flowing through the PL correctly, so you could argue that they were made up from an accounting perspective. And then secondly, some of the addbacks that were made to adjusted EBITDA seemed arbitrary and were inflating the actual adjusted EBITDA number. So if you were a sell-side analyst, the risk you ran is that your valuation was based on a number that was truly only 20% of the number you were using to drive that valuation. And then secondly, you had this cult of personality, which is another great um, attraction to a short seller. If everything is made to make the CEO look like a superstar and everything has to be about the CEO, that's always a very easy trigger for a short seller to build a short thesis. With that, I hope you see the difference between a high quality and low quality short attack. Thanks for watching. Always here to help you with your capital markets, investor relations, and corporate finance needs.